Hello, um, my name is David from Peripheral Games, and um, um, I know I've got a. I'm a game developer, and uh, here you have a video of um, War Inc. But um, I just want to talk about some stuff and sort of video blog, and I, I wanted to put something um, in the background. So here's a video of me playing War Inc. really, really badly, as you'll see. But anyways, um, one of the things I want to say was um, I, I've been, I've been, I'm not one for giving up. And uh, a few weeks ago, you may have known, um, I was trying out the Unreal Engine um, 3, the UDK, and it wasn't working very well, and I gave up. And it really bugged me, because I hate giving up, and I'm really, really not one for giving up. So, um, I went back to it, and over the past week, I've been doing lots of experiments on it, um, to try and learn it, and, and, and get it to do what I want. And I've actually come up with a whole load of really cool, um, interesting stuff. Namely, one of the things I said originally was that um, when you package the game, you get given an installer as a default, and I didn't like that. I wanted a standalone thing that I could distribute or make my own installer or distribute on um, on Indie City and such. And uh, you can actually do that um, if you if you package the game and then just take the the stuff from the installed folder. You can just install that in another computer. The only thing you need to do is install the dependencies yourself. So things like um, the Visual C++ redistributable and DirectX, stuff like that. If you include those in your installer, um, you can actually install the game without um, Epic Games' own installer. So that's what I did with that. Um, another thing I learned is... Um, sorry about that. Um, I didn't know if you were able to do things like morph targets and stuff, or shape keys as it's known in Blender, like morph targets in, in, in Blender because because the Unreal Engine is designed to work with um, with Maya and, and Autodesk and I, I can't afford those. So um, I, I did some experiments on that and I learned that you can actually do them but they have to be completely separate meshes. So for example if you, were, if you save out your, your, your base mesh and then you modify it like close his eyelid or move his leg or some other morph modification and save it out as a different file and then import both of them um, into the Unreal Engine then you can morph target from the one to the other um, which is cool and I also uh, figured out how to do um, how to import skeletal animation from Blender into the Unreal Engine so that again Blender can can be my content creation tool um, oh by the way if, if any of you want me to make video games deep or oh, not video games sorry um, if you want me to make videos detailing how to do any of this, just drop a comment, drop me a message, I will gladly do them. It's just I wanted to make this uh, this uh, video blog and get it out fairly soon. Um, also, I didn't want it to be too long. So, if But if you do want me to uh, to teach you how to do any of that stuff, then I've, I've been doing that. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was um, why learn the Unreal Engine? Why, why, why bother? Why... why put so much effort into learning such a complicated engine when I already know Unity inside out? And the answer is, um, I can't afford Unity Pro, let alone Unity, oh that was a cool kill there, um, um, let alone Unity Pro Mobile, which would come up something like $4,500, uh, which I just can't afford. So um, if I use UDK, I get the full features, I get AI, I get... Um, I get pathfinding, I get post-processing, all of the stuff that Unity Indie doesn't give me, I get for free in UDK. And, and I, I really like the licensing options. Of All I have to do is pay $99 when I release my game, and then I pay no royalties until I've made $50,000, uh, well that was a fail, until I've made $50,000, um, wh which is pretty cool. Then I, I pay 25% um, royalty, which I think is a really cool model. Um, I've also been uh, having a look into the CryEngine. Um, not because it's it's got more features. It's just my brain is the kind of brain that that craves learning. And once I've learned a piece of software inside out, like Unity, for example, I I, I crave. I want to learn something more. So I know that when I when I when I learn UDK inside out, I'm going to need something else um, something else to satisfy my brain. If you know what I mean. Um, and that's why I had a look into CryEngine, but, um, oh, sorry, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, yeah, um, oh, video's nearly coming to an end. Anyways, um, I, I crave learning, so when I, like, 
the cr I actually left the cry engine. Yeah, I remember what I was saying now. I left the cry engine because um, it's just as complicated, if not more complicated, than UDK. And if I were to try and learn both engines at the same time, uh, my brain would just frizzle. So um, I left cry engine. I will come back come back to it at a later stage because it is absolutely fantastic. The graphics are top notch. Uh, one of the only issues I have with it is it doesn't deploy to iOS or Android. Which I know, I know UDK uh, deploys to Android, but you need the full license, which is um, out of my budget, to say the least. Um, but it, d it does deploy to, UDK does deploy to iOS, um, which, you know, exactly what I want. Anyways, the video is coming to an end now, so uh, goodbye, and um, thanks for listening.